AP Physics 1, Kinematics 1, we are going to talk about the differences between vector and scalar quantities, and we'll do that by starting with uh, one term you know very well and another term you do not. The first one is distance, and we define distance as the length of path taken. And the other one uh, you're not too familiar with is displacement, which we typically call a straight line distance between your initial position and your final position. Distance is considered a scalar quantity and displacement itself is considered a vector quantity. Uh, the difference between those two truly is understanding that uh, one of them has magnitude while the other has magnitude and velocity. The scalar quantity has magnitude only, which means it debases only on size. We use it for, I'm driving 60 miles per hour. That's how fast I'm going. The number 60 is a size. It's a, it's a number, it's just a quantity. The vector quantity means I'm driving 60 miles per hour east or north or south. It always has a direction tag to it. And the way we like to look at this is kind of in a number line idea. So our number line is going to start with you guys imagining you're at your house and you have two friends. You have one friend that is two miles away and the other friend that is three miles away. And what you decide to do, let's roll that back a little bit, What you decide to do is leave your house and go to friend two's house because he's home and friend one is not. And since he's home, you walk all five miles. You don't get in your car. You walk all five miles to your friend two's house and you hang out there for a little while. And then when you get done hanging out with friend two, you and friend two decide to go over to friend one's house and hang out there for a while. And that's where you just hang out for the rest of the day. You, you end up staying there. And so we want to know how far you travel. We want to know the distance that you traveled from your house to friend two house all the way to friend one house. So that is five miles on, all the way to friend two and three miles to friend one for a total of eight miles. Now displacement is a little bit different. You know, uh, for distance, it was pretty easy to understand that you know, how far you walked was how far you traveled and and therefore that's your distance that you traveled. For displacement, it all depends on your position. Your initial position where you started was zero meters. You started at your house that was zero. It was just the very starting point, we'll just call it zero. And then your final position is where you ended up. So you ended up at friend one house, which is two miles from your house. So if we're looking for displacement, we treat that as your final position minus your initial position, which in this case would equal displacement. That's how we define displacement. That's final position minus initial position, which is two miles minus zero miles, and we end up with two miles. That's our answer. Um, it's not our complete answer, because when we look at this, what we get for distance is magnitude only. It's eight miles. For displacement, we were two miles, and if you look at where your house is in relation to friend one house, you are had to go two miles to the east to get there. First question I asked is how far did you travel? So distance, eight miles. That's how far you went. Displacement, displacement, your final position minus your initial position. It's two miles east, so you have two miles representing your magnitude or the size of your displacement and east would be the direction in which you traveled to get to friend one house. So in that sense we just define displacement as a vector quantity because it has magnitude and direction and distance is defined as a scalar quantity. So let's do another example. Well, we're going to look at a track. Uh, you know, most people have run on a track or seen a track that goes around a football field, and it's typically 400 meters uh, around. 
Okay, so you've got an oval or a shape of a track that is 400 meters, and you're going to start here. And then you're going to go around the track, and that black line represents you traveling around the track, and you start at one point, and you finish in the exact same point. So if I was to ask you your distance, your distance is the how far you traveled, the length of the path that you took. So the length of the path that you took, the distance, is 400 meters. It's very simple. That was your full path. Displacement, on the other hand, is your final position minus your initial position. You started at the same place you finished. It's zero meters, and you have no direction because you started exactly where you finished. So at that point, it's very simple to point out that you have no direction. It doesn't mean that all of a sudden it's a scalar quantity that it changes. Displacement is still a vector quantity. Uh, you just didn't happen to go anywhere. If somebody took a picture of you before you started the race and, you know, and then after when you ended the race, you might look tired, but you're in the same spot. You'd be in the same position on the photo. So somebody might say that you didn't go anywhere, so there's no displacement whatsoever. There's no direction, and that's okay. Um, so what we do then is we define, other than dis distance and displacement, we also define speed and velocity. Speed is based upon distance and as a function of time. It's the distance traveled as a function of time. And since it includes a scalar quantity like distance, it is a scalar quantity in itself, and we have, it has an equation where speed equals distance over time. That's its equation. Displacement, on the other hand, uh, is got displace, or I'm sorry, velocity on the other hand has displacement in its definition, making it a vector. And displacement, uh, sorry, velocity is displacement as a function of time. So velocity equals the change in displacement over time, and change in x is typically the variable we use for displacement. Uh, it can be change in y as well. It could be change in any variable, but change in some position. So we're going to recreate our uh, number line with our houses on it. Your house, friend one, friend two. You're two miles from friend one. You're five miles total from friend two. And you went to friend two's house and then all the way back to friend one's house. Um, at that point we want to know the speed. So if we were trying to find the speed at which you traveled from friend one's house to friend two's house, what we do is take the distance you traveled, which is eight miles, and the time it took. So we labeled the first trip from your house to friend two's house as two hours. After you stayed there, the travel time when you left to go to friend one's house was one hour. So you took your total three hours of travel time, not how long you hung out with your friend at their house, just your travel time. So you had three hours of travel time. So we use our equation, speed equals distance divided by time. And we know that's eight over three. And doing math, eight over three equals 2.67 miles. And then that happens in an, a time frame, so 2.67 miles per hour. Uh, you're used to using that in your car that you travel some miles per hour, like a school zone is 20 miles per hour. But velocity is a little bit different. Velocity is displacement over time. So if we were to look at the displacement of our example earlier, we had a displacement or change in x of 2 miles, and the time was still 3 hours. So velocity is the change in displacement over time. When we plug in our numbers to calculate that, we get 2 over 3, which comes out to 0.67 miles per hour. But it has to have a direction on it to be a vector, so it's east, or we can also say to the right. In this picture, we drew it to the right. Friend two's, or friend one's house was to the right of your house. Uh, I typically like to use uh, nautical things like north, south, east, and west, or graphical representations where we talk about degrees or angles, and it's the easiest way to do this. Another thing that's important about uh, scalar and vector quantities is, is that scalar quantities, such as speed, for example, uh, cannot be negative. A scalar quantity is always a value, always has magnitude, so 
that magnitude is always positive. Uh, it's not negative. Velocity, on the other hand, can be negative because velocity has a direction. And you've, you've learned in your math classes up to this point that anything above the x-axis is considered to be positive. Anything below the x-axis is considered to be negative. So we can have a negative velocity just by the direction it's going. Uh, so if north is considered to be positive, that would make south negative. Uh, so it, velocity itself, because it is a vector quantity, can be negative. All right, let's talk a little bit about motion graphs where we kind of include the definitions we just learned. So we're going to have a graph of position in meters versus time in seconds, and we're going to create three lines. Each one of those lines has a slope, and the slope is determined by rise over run. And in this graph, you can look at it that it's change in displacement over time, or change in x over time, so the rise is going up to what we always have called in math class a y-axis, but in this case, the variable on the y-axis is change in x, so we'll put that where y goes, on the top of the fraction, and then time is on the x-axis, so we'll put that on the bottom or the run side uh, or the bottom of the fraction. And so we get change in x over t, which we should know is our velocity equation based on what we did on the last page. So velocity is the slope of each line. So I've labeled each one of them as velocity 1, velocity 2, and velocity 3. Uh, velocity 3 happens to have a negative velocity. And like we talked about earlier, a vector quantity can be negative. It can be positive as well, but it can be negative. Uh, so the slope, I'm writing a definition here for you, the slope of a position versus time graph is velocity every time, especially when it's a line graph. We like things in line graph form. It makes life easy. So the slope of a position versus time graph is velocity. So we have two positive velocities and one negative velocity based on the slopes of that line. Each line has an equation in which we could write, and we use the equation for a line to create a relationship. Each line has an equation in the form of y equals mx plus b, and we'll use y equals mx plus b to create a relationship. And how we do that is substituting the variables on the axes. So we have a y-axis, so we'll substitute the, the variable on the y-axis for y, We'll substitute the variable on the x-axis for x, and then we'll substitute the slope, which you just learned by definition is velocity. Uh, we'll substitute velocity in for slope, and, and then we'll teach what, the, what we're going to change the y-intercept to be. What you need to know is that each one of the variables in the slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b, is a placeholder. They are not those variables all the time. They're just placeholders. We can replace y with something else. We can replace that placeholder with another variable that we use in physics. So the first one, for y, we're going to place x, because that's what's on our y-axis. And for the x-axis, we're going to replace it with t, because t is on the x-axis. We know the slope m is velocity in this case, so we're going to replace it with v. And then where we start on our graph happens to be the y-intercept where it crosses the y-axis. So every single one of those graphs starts at a y-intercept and it happens to be what we call the initial position and where each line stops is the final position. So we replace the y-intercept with initial position or uh, the variable there is called x naught uh, just for the starting position, initial position. So that is our relationship. Uh, in class Yesterday, you were asked to find the relationship between height and distance. Well, writing an equation by substituting your variables that we're using in physics into an equation you already know is creating a relationship. So this is the relationship between position and time. Now we're going to do another graph. It's a velocity versus time graph, velocity being in meters per second and time in seconds. And what we're going to do is we're going to draw a flat line, a straight flat line. And the slope of this line is going to be rise over run, just like we did before. And the rise side of the graph is velocity, and the run side of the graph is time. So we're going to have change of velocity over time, which equals acceleration. Acceleration is the slope 
of a velocity versus time graph. Uh, and then we, if we look at this line, does the, there's no rise. The, the line itself on the graph does not rise at all. It just runs. So that means that we have no acceleration. Because zero over, because since there's no rise, that's zero for our rise. Zero over any time, 18 seconds, 100 seconds, zero seconds, is zero. So the acceleration of this graph is zero. And so what that means to us is that this graph has a constant velocity. It's not accelerating. Um, and that's something we're going to deal with quite a bit when we start this course. We have zero meters per second squared for our acceleration. We're going to deal quite a bit with motion graphs. We're going to do a lot of these. This is going to be the basis of the first unit, uh, understanding motion graphs, position, time, velocity, speed, uh, displacement, and, and all those variables and all their units that go along with them and then how to graph them and create relationships from them. So uh, we're going to do a lot more of this in class with practice. Uh, so be prepared with questions based on this video next class.